This podcast is sponsored by Release Winery. Join us as the story of this ultra-limited wine continues. Learn more at releasewinery.com. I grew up in fine dining and restaurants. Um, my dad was a restaurateur and a wine broker on the East Coast, and so I grew up very exposed to, to great food and, and fine wines and uh, stocking wine cellars when I was 12 years old and peeling potatoes too. It wasn't all fancy, but um, did about every, every job you could do in a restaurant and um, sort of fell in love with wine through food. Once I figured out I could actually study it in school, I, I pursued that pretty aggressively. I thought I would cook, honestly. I thought I'd go to culinary school, but once I started reading and studying a little bit more about enology and viticulture and um, you know, sort of travel, uh, which can come along with winemaking, um, I, I got pretty excited about it and sort of jumped on it. And um, I know my, my dad was helpful as well. He was telling me that you, know, you need to focus on one variety and it should be Syrah. And I said, okay, I'll focus on one, but it's not gonna be Syrah, Dad. Um, but yeah, I definitely had some um, some people in my corner, so he said that in 92, and uh, I think it was just one of his favorites, and sure. I'm glad I didn't stick with Syrah. I do love Syrah, but, um, you know, it's not, my, it's not my, uh, my top variety that I work with, so. The original Vinoche wines were, um, were from the Pimray Vineyard, and that's where Brian and Lori Nuss lived for many, many years and, um, and managed the estate and farmed the vineyard for Robin Williams and his family. So next door to the vineyard uh, is uh, another vineyard called Amentet, and that is uh, a 17-acre parcel that is uh, mostly Cabernet Sauvignon and a little bit of Cabernet Franc, all on Mount Beter at the end of Wall Road. Yeah, we do a Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc, which I source from a few different properties. And then we do uh, Lori's Lucky Penny Sauvignon Blanc, which is a slightly higher price point, uh, spends a little bit more time uh, in barrel, and um, that's from uh, Oakville property. And even this year in 21, because of the shortages in Sauvignon Blanc, Brian really wanted me to go out and maybe try uh, another refreshing wine. So we did a rosé, a little Pinot Noir rosé. Um, and then uh, we're even playing around with a, a very small Chardonnay bottling, just to sort of broaden the portfolio a touch. <laughs> I work with a lot of Oregon fruit, and uh, yeah, and I spent some time in New Zealand. So yeah, um, I definitely feel lucky to be making wine in California. Um, we, we have wonderful weather, mostly, um, usually, and um, usually not too many. Um, catastrophes like the fires but uh, yeah the California grape growing and winemaking is um, to me it's exciting it's adventurous but at the same time it's a little safer than you know I've been making wine in Oregon for 13 years now and that's a, a roller coaster ride but it's exciting and fun as well I have my own brand um, that I make here in Napa Valley at Vineyard 29. So it's uh, Sonria is my own little Pinot brand. And then I have another brand that I do a Chardonnay under called At Large. I have a few. Um, I'm fortunate to have a few. There's a gentleman that I worked under in New Zealand named Alan Johnson, an amazing winemaker at uh, Palliser Estate. And um, here a little bit more locally, Zelma Long was a mentor of mine, um, worked with her for a few years and learned a lot, learned a lot about wine vocabulary from her. Um, uh, not just descriptors, but true vocabulary of wine when you're trying to express what you're tasting and what you're smelling and what you're feeling. Um, so that was wonderful. And then Philippe Melka is a good friend and mentor that I've worked with for a good 14 years or so. I like to tell people what I think of the wine, but I also tell people that, you know, it's really what you're feeling and what you're tasting, what you're smelling. You know, you're not wrong. You just, you know, it's, a, it's an open book. So just uh, figure out how the wine makes you feel and what you're smelling and what you're tasting and, and write that down or tell us. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's a specific thing. I think, and it's funny because I can taste the same exact wine with three or four different critics every year and they're going to say many different words and many different descriptors and uh, so that's always interesting to me but for me it's a color spectrum with red wines I always talk in the blues the reds the purples the blacks etc and I think that's a lot of people know that in the industry and um, but that helps me a lot to just put it into a category you know this is more blue fruit driven this is more black fruit driven you know things like that. I do, yeah, I do. I like to come down to the Vinoche tasting room and spend some time with them and get to meet their customers. And they do events as well, so I like to come to those events. They're always fun and get to talk to a lot of people and 
you know, tell people about the wines. Yeah, until someone says, that's Keith, he makes the wine. Yeah, right. <laughs> I usually try and build them up a little bit. I tell them this is how I feel about the wine. This is what I think it smells and tastes like. Um, but you're, you know, certainly open for your opinion as well. And so I like to hear their opinions. I like to hear what they have to say. And you know, they're never wrong. I never tell them they're wrong at all. Um, I just listen and um, and you know, maybe uh, can sort of persuade them in a certain direction. But I'm very um, peaceful about it all. Oh, um, I remember my sister and brother-in-law fighting over a wine, over a Pinot Noir. Um, one of them, because I have taught them a lot about fruit and descriptors and things like that, and one of them thought it was, you know, um, cigar box and cedar and all this, and uh, and it was very far from that. But I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to necessarily jump in and correct them. So um, I let the other person do that. Yeah. <laughs> and ended up being a little, ended up being a little spat, and it was funny though. Yeah, come check us out at vinoche.com. It'd be great. You did that like you knew it. I do. <laughs>